Welcome, wrestling enthusiasts and curious minds alike, to a journey through the mysterious depths of the iceberg of lost wrestling media. Today, we embark on a thrilling exploration into the obscure and forgotten corners of the wrestling world, diving deep into the realms of lost matches, rare footage, and untold stories that have slipped through the cracks of time. Join us as we unravel the layers of this iceberg, uncovering the hidden gems and unsolved mysteries that make up the rich tapestry of wrestling's lost media. Whether you're a diehard fan or a casual observer, prepare to be captivated by the untold history and elusive moments that have become legends in their own rights. This is Wrestling's Lost Media Iceberg. For those who are unfamiliar with the iceberg concept, the structure of this video is inspired by the iceberg metaphor, where only a small portion of the iceberg is visible above the waterline, representing the well-known or mainstream information, while the bulk of the iceberg is submerged, symbolizing the hidden or niche details. So basically, as we go further in the video, you'll find out things you never knew as you get to the bottom of the rabbit hole of lost media. But without further ado, let's get right into the video. We're beginning with tier 1 which is just at the surface. The first incident of lost media that we'll cover is the Owen Hart fall. On May 23rd, 1999, professional wrestler Owen Hart fell from the rafters of the Kemper Arena in Kansas City, Missouri during a pay-per-view taping of WWF Over the Edge 1999. This is one of the most famous pieces of lost media. Since WWF cameras were rolling at the time of the accident, footage of Hart's fatal fall exists on tape. This was confirmed in a column written by former WWF announcer Kevin Kelly in May 2013. According to Kelly, the tape sits in the WWE archive in Stamford, Connecticut with instructions never to destroy, view or duplicate. And the next thing we'll be looking at is the paralyzation of Draws. Draws vs. D'Lo Brown was a 1999 wrestling match that originally was slated for WWF SmackDown. In the match, D'Lo Brown incorrectly executed a powerbomb finisher, which broke Draws' neck, fracturing two vertebrae and thus ending his career, leaving him a permanent quadriplegic. The match was taped in its entirety, but because the venue was WWF SmackDown, the match was taped days before its airing, giving WWF time to edit out inconsistencies, as they had done with all other SmackDown tapings. Because of this, WWF technicians have withheld the footage of the match, deciding not to release it in any format. However, the footage of Draws being taken out on a stretcher has been seen in WWE's Don't Try This At Home public service announcements. Next up we have Screwed, the Bret Hart story. WWF released a DVD called The Self-Destruction of the Ultimate Warrior, and in this documentary they slammed the Ultimate Warrior more than praising his career. WWE attempted to do the same thing with Bret Hart in a documentary called Screwed the Bret Hart Story, and this was just to paint Bret Hart in a negative light after his WWE career. The documentary recorded interviews involving Shawn Michaels, Jerry Lawler, and Hulk Hogan talking negatively about Bret Hart. WWE eventually scrapped this negative portrayal and decided to direct the documentary painting Bret Hart in a positive light, but the negative recorded interviews that were about Bret Hart have never been available to the public. And now because Hart has a more positive relation with the WWE and making amends with various wrestlers that were interviewed, it's unlikely that WWE will release the interviews or any other footage exclusively intended for Screwed, the Bret Hart story. And next up we have WWF In Your House 8, Beware of the Dark. WWF In Your House 8 Beware of the Dog was a wrestling pay-per-view event produced by WWE. It was first broadcast in 1996 in South Carolina, headlined by a WWF World Heavyweight Championship match between champion Shawn Michaels and challenger the British Bulldog. However, the event is infamous for a power cut that knocked out the pay-per-view feed and arena power, causing some of the matches to occur and to be recorded in almost complete darkness, as well as some of the match finishes being changed from the original plan. Likely because the untelevised matches were of poor quality, some matches from this pay-per-view have been released on the WWE Network, but a lot of the matches that took place at this pay-per-view have not been released to the public. There's also been footage of the lights going out uploaded to the internet, but the four matches have yet to resurface. Up next we have the Jake the Snake and Hulk Hogan Snake Pit segment. This is an infamous segment that hasn't been seen since the 80s, but it is legendary. Hulk Hogan and Jake the Snake Roberts were set to feud with each other for the WWF Championship, so there was a segment where Jake invited Hogan to the snake pit for an interview. Roberts would compare Hogan's arms to pythons, and then he would hit a DDT on Hogan, starting their feud. However, after Roberts hit the DDT on Hogan, the crowd went nuts for Roberts. Vince McMahon was of course watching this segment, and he panicked seeing the crowd cheer for Jake, rather than his WWF champion and biggest star at the time, Hulk Hogan, and so he nixed the feud, and footage of this segment hasn't been released by WWE. Hulk Hogan and Jake the Snake ultimately did have several matches in 1986 and 1987, but this segment has never ever resurfaced. 
And next up, we have the mass transit incident, which took place at ECW in 1996. This is where 17-year-old Eric Kulas, a ring named Mass Transit, was seriously injured by notorious wrestler New Jack, with New Jack blading Mass Transit too deeply, severing two of his arteries. Fan footage of this incident exists on the internet, so it's still able to be viewed by others, but the official footage shot by ECW has never been released to the public. And next up, we have Chris Benoit, WWE SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 was released in the fall of 2007, and it was a part of the popular WWE vs. SmackDown Raw series, now titled WWE 2K. During development, wrestler Chris Benoit was originally going to be a playable character in the game, but was quickly removed due to the actions that he committed in the summer of 2007 in which he took the life of his wife, his son, and himself. Chris Benoit isn't in the game, but he remains in the game's code, and that's about it. It's also been widely speculated that he was supposed to be one of the cover stars for SmackDown vs. Raw 2008. This kind of makes sense because the game wanted to have ECW representation on the cover, and on the weekend where Benoit committed those heinous acts, he was scheduled to win the ECW World Championship. But of course he didn't. Instead, to get ECW representation on the cover, another star, Bobby Lashley, who had held the WWE version of the ECW World Championship the most times of any wrestlers, was instead on the cover. This one's very interesting because Benoit could have very well been on the cover instead of Lashley, seeing that he was the biggest star at that time in ECW. And now we're moving down the iceberg into tier 2. The first piece of lost media on tier 2 is the photographs of the plane ride from hell. The plane ride from hell was a series of incidents of WWE wrestlers misbehaving on a flight in 2002. Since the flight was delayed an hour before takeoff, many wrestlers took to drinking while they were waiting. Among the incidents were two wrestlers, Brock Lesnar and Kurt Henning, grappling, with Lesnar taking Henning down and almost diving both of them through the emergency door while the flight was mid-air. Various other antics also took place, such as Ric Flair, SAing female flight attendants, and Michael Hayes having his hair cut off while he was sleeping because he sucker punched another wrestler and caused him to bleed. It's been reported that multiple photos on this plane ride were taken. To this day, no one knows what happened to the photos, and they have not surfaced online in any form. And the next incident is the death of Mitsuharu Masawa. Pro Wrestling Noah is a wrestling company that is based in Japan, founded by Mitsuharu Masawa in 2000. Masawa carried great fame before and after founding the company, and he was considered as one of the best wrestlers in the world and in wrestling history. In 2009, despite his deteriorating health due to demands of the sport, Masawa wrestled a tag match for the GHC Tag Team Championships, and during the match, Masawa received a backdrop suplex, where he was dropped right on his head and he fell unconscious immediately. Seeing that Masawa was not getting up, the match was instantly stopped and Masawa was rushed to a hospital where he was pronounced dead within hours. He was 46 years old. His cause of death was never made public. The only thing Pro Wrestling Noah has revealed about the incident is the moment in which Masawa was treated by paramedics after the match. This was done in order to be shown on the Japanese news. Beyond this, nothing official has been shown in order to show respect to such a beloved personality as Mitsuharu Masawa was. A person in the crowd recorded the entire match from arena seats with his camera, but he has refused to reveal it to the public out of respect for Masawa. Instead, he has just uploaded the moments before and after the match. The next piece of lost media is Mark Jindrak in Evolution. Evolution was a professional wrestling stable that was prominent between 2003 to 2005, consisting of Triple H, Ric Flair, Randy Orton, and Batista. Evolution was a dominant group on WWE Raw. Before Evolution had even formed, Batista was slated to be in the group. However, when Batista suffered two tricep injuries that took him out of action for months, WWE had considered replacing him with Mark Jindrak, shooting vignettes featuring Jindrak as the fourth man of Evolution's Titantron. Because Jindrak was replaced in Evolution prior to making his debut for the stable, the vignettes featuring him were never featured in Evolution's Titantron, with the helicopter and nightclub clips containing just the trio. When Batista was re-added, WWE simply spliced clips of him between the vignettes. To this day, the footage of Jindrak in these vignettes has not been released. And next up we have Radio WWF. Radio WWF was a professional wrestling radio show, produced by the WWF, now WWE. It provided commentary for its pay-per-views and discussed news surrounding the wrestling industry as a whole. The show ran for some time, but eventually it was cancelled. Likely due to each version of the show proving unable to attract many stations to carry them, recordings of Radio WWF remain scarce. It is therefore coveted media among those seeking the alternative pay-per-view commentary. There's some recordings of Radio WWF on the internet, but it is scarce compared to the amount of shows that they put on. And next up, we have WCW's audio-only pay-per-views. 
In the late 90s, WCW held six special wrestling events that were broadcast exclusively via the WCW website. These events were audio only, with WCW commentator Tony Schiavone providing the play-by-play -play of each show. These events were not recorded by WCW themselves and thus were never released on home video. However, the audio streams are said by some fans to have been downloadable, but no files have surfaced. When WCW was purchased by WWE, the entire video library was acquired and it is unknown if WWE is in possession of the audio of these events. And next up we have Tyson Kidd's last match. In 2015, prior to an episode of WWE Raw, professional wrestlers Samoa Joe and Tyson Kidd faced each other in a dark match. The encounter would become infamous for being Tyson Kidd's last match as a botched landing during Samoa Joe's finisher, the Muscle Buster, resulted in Tyson Kidd suffering career-ending spinal cord injuries. Initial reports claimed that the match would subsequently air on WWE Superstars, primarily because Superstars' banners were present on the sides of the ring. However, it was confirmed that the encounter would remain a dark match. Cameramen can also be seen in the photos of the match, confirming match footage was captured by WWE. However, the tape is unlikely to ever be publicly released due to containing Kidd's career-ending injuries and out of respect for Kidd himself. The only footage that is publicly available is a fan recording of the finish. And next up we have the last footage from the alternate endings of WWE's WrestleMania 36. WWE WrestleMania 36 was the 36th instance of WWE's annual flagship show. It ended on the 5th and 6th of April 2020 and it was the first ever WrestleMania to be televised over two nights as well as the first to be taped. This was all because of the pandemic, which resulted in WWE being forced to film the matches at its performance center in Orlando, Florida about two weeks before it aired. There were supposed to be 65,000 fans in attendance but there were no spectators due to the pandemic. The difference in filming and airing dates led to concern over spoilers and this prompted WWE to film alternate endings to some of their matches. While WrestleMania 36 can be easily viewed on the WWE Network, no footage or photos of alternate finishes have ever been made publicly available. The tapes containing the different endings likely dwell within WWE's tape library, although the chances of the clips being publicly released remains low due to how they would break WWE's continuity following the show's airing. One match that was on WrestleMania 36 that could have had an alternate ending is a cinematic match between John Cena and Bray Wyatt in which the latter picked up the win. These two had history that went all the way back to 2014. Luckily, their feud was able to happen considering that John Cena was involved in a bad car accident in 2012 at least he had no injuries. However, many people aren't as lucky as John Cena and are injured in car accidents and they don't have the means or the know-how to pursue legal action. That's where the modern solution of Morgan & Morgan comes in. Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury law firm and they help over 3 million people every year and have recovered over $15 billion for their clients. With Morgan & Morgan, there's no need for you to visit law offices and sit through long consultations. You can submit a claim and have a lawyer review your case with only 8 clicks on your phone. You can submit your case details, sign contracts, upload documents and medical records all from your cell phone. You can even text your attorney and legal team throughout the duration of your case. Contacting a personal injury attorney should be your first step in a car accident. And the amazing thing about Morgan & Morgan is that you pay nothing unless they win the case. There's literally nothing to lose. Don't overthink it. Take action to protect your rights and Morgan & Morgan will fight to get the compensation you deserve. If you're ever injured in an accident, you can submit a claim at www.forthepeople.com slash ageofwrestling or by dialing pound law. That's pound 529 on your cell phone. Thank you to Morgan & Morgan for sponsoring this video. And we're going down the iceberg once again into the third tier. With our first entry on the third tier, the ECW Arena Fire. In 1995, ECW was holding an event at the ECW Arena in Philadelphia. The event gained infamy in the match between Cactus Jack and Tommy Dreamer. In this match, there was a stunt involving a steel chair wrapped in a towel that was set on fire and it ended up engulfing Terry Funk and a fan in flames, causing major panic among those in attendance that led to a stampede. No footage of the incident has ever been publicly released, with ECW claiming during a litigation case involving the injured fan that the tape was accidentally erased the following week. However, some question this as footage of a crucifix angle coming from the same event appeared on the following week's ECW television program. If it still exists, it is likely within WWE's tape library, as WWE purchased ECW's assets and its tape library in 2003. However, given the context of the incident, it is highly unlikely that it will end up on the WWE network. And up next we have Goldberg's pre-television debut matches. Goldberg is a professional wrestler most famous for his undefeated streak in WCW. Making his television debut in September of 1997 on Monday Nitro, Goldberg would amass an alleged 173 consecutive wins without defeat. 
including defeating Hollywood Hulk Hogan for the World Heavyweight Championship before losing to Kevin Nash at Starcade 98. However, prior to his television debut, Goldberg competed in six matches from June to July of 1997, five of which occurred during tapings, and one of these matches saw him be defeated. All of Goldberg's pre-debut matches occurred during tapings for either Nitro or Saturday Night, thus it is likely footage was captured of these matches. Pre-show footage of WCW events have publicly resurfaced in the past, but as of the present day, none of the pre-shows containing Goldberg's early matches have resurfaced. Nevertheless, the tapes of these matches could exist within WWE's vaults, with the company having purchased WCW and its tape library in 2001. And up next we have the alternate endings of the match between Johnny Gargano and Velveteen Dream. On the 31st of January 2019, Johnny Gargano defended his NXT North American Championship against Velveteen Dream, with the latter picking up the win. However, this match was going to air about three weeks later, and the difference in dates between the filming and taping prompted concern over spoilers. To avoid this, WWE filmed an alternate ending which featured Gargano retaining the belt. While the broadcast version of Gargano vs Dream with Dream picking up the win is easily available on the WWE network, footage of the alternate ending remains completely inaccessible to the public. The only accessible media of the ending is a photo of Gargano with the belt on his shoulder following his victory. The tape containing the alternate ending likely still remains in WWE's vaults, although the chances of a release remain slim due to how it breaks WWE's continuity, with Dream having since left the company on seemingly bad terms. And up next we have the alternate ending for Keith Lee vs Adam Cole. During the peak of the pandemic, NXT threw the Great American Bash, and it closed up with a match between the North American Champion Keith Lee and the NXT Champion Adam Cole, and the match was a winner takes all match. While the match sold itself, the added stipulation of winner takes all just added that much more to the match. The match was recorded before it aired on TV, so WWE were concerned about spoilers regarding the finish of the match. They decided to film alternate endings. The ending that aired was Keith Lee winning the match and winning the NXT Championship while holding the North American Championship. While the match is easily accessible on the WWE Network, footage of the alternate ending remains completely inaccessible for public viewing, and they likely would not release it seeing that both superstars have left the company for AEW. And up next we have the lost footage of Awesome Kong vs Melissa Anderson. During a TNA taping in 2009, professional wrestlers Awesome Kong and Melissa Anderson competed in a dark match. Despite the lack of hype surrounding the match, it was highly acclaimed by those in attendance, with some considering it to be one of the best women's matches of its era. While there are plenty of photos of the match, no footage of it has ever been publicly released by TNA. The match received rave reviews, but it was never intended to air on television, and it doesn't look like they will ever be released to the public. And next up we have Strange Kentucky People, which is a lost recording of a tribute to Chris Jericho. In his 2007 autobiography, A Lion's Tale Around the World in Spandex, professional wrestler Chris Jericho discussed his time working in Smoky Mountain Wrestling. During a show in Paintsville, Kentucky, Jericho received a videotape from a female fan, which he claimed contained all of his SMW matches. In actuality, it contained a bizarre tribute to him, with now the tape being commonly referred to as the Strange Kentucky People. The tape in question had incestual, not safe for work themes between the girl and her family, as well as her and her family doing some very outlandish things. Jericho commented on the tape's content, stating that he was unsure why the fan gave him the tape, but proclaimed it was more entertaining than a tape of his SMW matches. According to Jericho, the recording ended up on the tape trading circuit, being called Strange Kentucky People. However, while the tape theoretically could still be in the possession of an avid tape collector, no footage or images of it have ever resurfaced. It has since become a holy grail among wrestling tape traders. And now we're moving on down a tier into the fourth tier. The first entry of lost footage in the fourth tier is Kurt Angle vs Owen Hart. In 1999, during a taping of WWF Shotgun Saturday and before live WWF Raw is War, respected professional wrestlers Kurt Angle and Owen Hart faced each other in a dark match. Occurring prior to Angle's television debut at WWF Survivor Series that same year, the match convinced Hart and others that Angle would be a future world champion. While Angle's dark matches were not intended to be televised, a few have been publicly released. However, no footage of this match with Hart is currently publicly available, with just a single photo of Angle executing a power slam being viewable. The chances of the match resurfacing is slim, especially with Peacock's acquisition of the WWE Network, focusing more on ensuring the media meets NBC's standards and practices rather than releasing new material. Further, rumors the match would be released during Kurt Angle's return to WWE in 2017 came to nothing. Additionally, Hart's widow Dr. Martha Hart has refused to allow WWE to profit off of Owen's name again following his death, which could also impact the possibility of the match's release on legal grounds. 
And next up, you have TNA Explosion Episodes pre-2006. TNA has been active since 2002. They started off doing weekly pay-per-views for the wrestling show before getting a TV show on Spike TV. They also had a show called Impact Explosion, where a lot of lower tier wrestlers would have matches. In the beginning, it was mainly produced for international markets, though in its later years, episodes would be distributed in the United States on Impact+. Plus. About four years worth of episodes pre-2006 have not been found on the internet and only little clips or pictures can be found on the net. TNA probably has all these episodes locked away in a vault somewhere, but it remains to be seen whether they will release any of these recordings. And next up we have Kenny Omega vs AJ Styles. In 2006, AJ Styles and Kenny Omega competed against each other in the main event of PCW Back to School Bash for Premier Championship Wrestling. In a matchup that is now regarded as a dream match by several wrestling journalists and fans, Omega himself credits the bout for keeping him in wrestling rather than focusing on an MMA career. Footage of this fight is hard to come by, but it exists in a few fragments that were included in the 2019 TSN documentary Omega Man, A Wrestling Love Story. However, as discussion about the last match intensified, it attracted the attention of PCW, and PCW's owner revealed that his company held the full tape of the match within its archives. Whether PCW will publicly release the full tape remains unclear. And next up, we have the last Hell in a Cell match. In 2011, John Cena defended his WWE Championship against Alberto Del Rio, CM Punk, Dolph Ziggler, and Jack Swagger in a fatal five-way inside a Hell in a Cell. Occurring in Kansas City, Missouri, it is notable for being the only instance of an untelevised Hell in a Cell match. Prior to 2017, only amateur footage of the match was available, with the master tape lying somewhere within WWE's tape library. However, to promote the 2017 edition of Hell in a Cell, WWE released a few photos and a segment of the match. The rest of the master tape footage has never been publicly released by the company. And next up, we have Terry Funk's Satchel Ass promo. Terry Funk is one of the greatest wrestlers of all time and he is a pioneer of the hardcore style of wrestling. In 2006, while he was with WWE and was feuding with Mick Foley, he cut the famous Satchel Ass promo. This promo featured Terry Funk hilariously calling Mick Foley a Satchel Ass. Funk said that his dad told him to never trust a man whose ass is wider than his shoulders and that's why he couldn't trust Mick Foley. He was basically roasting Mick Foley relentlessly. This was before the WWE Network and was a WWE.com exclusive promo that didn't air on TV. Only small remnants of the promo are left online today. Satchel ass! Satchel ass! But WWE probably has it somewhere within their vaults, and it is unclear whether they'll release it, considering Terry Funk's passing. And up next we have Sheamus vs John Cena vs The Undertaker in a steel cage match. In 2010, an untelevised wrestling match occurred after the 900th edition of Raw in Boston, Massachusetts. Sheamus defended his WWE Championship against John Cena and The Undertaker in a triple threat steel cage match. No footage or photographs of the match were officially released by WWE on their website or their YouTube channel. The only existing media of the match is various amateur footage filmed by fans in attendance for the show. One footage only shows the closing stages while the other contains the full match. The master tape footage has never been released by WWE and likely remains stored in the vaults at their headquarters. And next up we have the Von Erich family touring in apartheid South Africa. The Von Erichs were a famous family of professional wrestlers who gained prominence in the world of wrestling, particularly the Texas-based promotion World Class Championship Wrestling during the 1970s and 80s. They were beloved babyfaces, but tragedy ruined their prospects of truly taking over the wrestling world. There's actually a movie starring Zac Efron called The Iron Claw based on the story of the Von Erichs. The Von Erichs actually did a tour in 1985 in apartheid South Africa. For those who don't know, apartheid was a system of institutionalized racial segregation and discrimination that took place in South Africa, where there were many policies designed to maintain the political and economic dominance of the white minority over the black majority. The Von Erichs performed in a politically turbulent South Africa in front of white-only crowds, but there's no comprehensive footage to be seen of them wrestling in South Africa, even though it did happen. And moving down the iceberg to the fifth tier, our first entry on the fifth tier is Val Venus's Sex University. Val Venus was a sexually obsessed, pornographic film actor character who was a solid mid-carder in the late 90s and early 2000s, but by 2007 his character had fallen by the wayside, and to remedy the situation, WWE gave him the show, Sex U, on their broadband service, on their website. It was popular with WWE starting in 2007 and it was the most viewed series on the broadband service, with it being viewed over 800,000 times. There were only four Sex U episodes, and in each episode, Val Venus shared his wealth of sex experience. The show is mainly giving viewers bedroom advice. 
Val Venus debuted the show a few months before the Chris Benoit tragedies, and after Chris Benoit did what he did, WWE focused on cleaning up their product and making it more PG, and that meant that Sex U was cancelled. There are no screenshots or any short clips of the episodes. While it is likely WWE has access to the web series, they are extremely unlikely to release it. And up next we have Lita's training videos. Lita is a professional wrestler who competed in WWE from 2000 to 2006. She is most known for joining the Hardy Boys to form Team Extreme, her time as a valet for Edge and being a three-time women's champion. Prior to her debut in 2000, Lita had trained in Mexico and the United States in the late 1990s, with at least two of her training sessions being recorded. In mid-2020, a hardcore Lita fan uploaded the two training segments onto YouTube, lasting a combined total of 22 seconds, with one of the videos lacking sound. In the comment section for the video, the fan responded to questions concerning the whereabouts of the full video, stating that this was the only footage they could show without buying the tapes. Thus, more footage of these sessions may have existed at some point, though it remains publicly unavailable as of the present day. It is also known that after Lita graduated from the Funking Conservatory in August of 1999, Funk Jr. and his wife established a compilation video containing footage of Lita competing at the training camp, sending it over to the WWF. It is possible that the video contained the footage of the training sessions, although this remains to be seen. And up next we have Celebrity Wrestling. Celebrity Wrestling was a British wrestling reality TV show broadcast on ITV1. Lasting for a single season in 2005, it involved professional wrestling and wrestling related events between two teams of celebrities. The trainers of the show who were tasked to train the celebrities were Rowdy Rowdy Piper and D'Lo Brown. But ultimately, celebrity wrestling was not a success, and it was more of a jokey affair in which the celebrities didn't take too seriously. While the first four episodes of Celebrity Wrestling were broadcast on primetime television, the poor initial ratings combined with the few repeats due to its poor reception has led to much of the show becoming lost media. While no full episodes currently exist, a segment and match featuring Leilani Dowding against Kate Lawler were uploaded to YouTube in August of 2006. Additionally, a review of the show contains clips that would otherwise be completely inaccessible. And up next, we have Chowder Heads. Chowderheads is an unaired American cartoon created by Eli Roth, produced by WCW, which followed the exploits of three teenage professional wrestling fans. It was to air weekly on WCW Monday Nitro before being pulled before the first episode aired. For nearly 17 years, none of the eight episodes of Chowderheads would see a public release. However, in January of 2016, the first episode would be uploaded onto Facebook. The remaining seven episodes are likely in the possession of WWE, locked away in their vaults somewhere. And next up we have a star studded 8 man tag. In early 2010, an 8 man tag team match took place after a Smackdown episode taping. It consisted of babyfaces, Edge, John Cena, Rey Mysterio and Triple H taking on the heels, Batista, Chris Jericho, CM Punk and Sheamus. That is a star studded lineup. The show the match took place on was held at the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. As the match was untelevised, there is very limited footage available online. No photographs were ever posted to the official WWE website and the master tape footage has never been released either. The star studded match was taped and is probably locked away somewhere in WWE's vaults. And next up we have the Triple A Star of Death cage match. Triple A is one of the major wrestling promotions in Mexico and has gained international recognition. It was founded in 1992 and has been known for its lucha libre style which incorporates a mix of traditional wrestling, acrobatics and high flying maneuvers. The only Star of Death cage match took place at Triple A's event in 1995 in Los Angeles. The cage was a cage shaped like the Star of David. The match was star studded, with one team having Conan, Pero Aguayo, Pero Aguayo Jr., Rey Mysterio and Super Carlo, and they defeated Cybernetico, Damian Triple Six, Halloween, Juventud Guerrera and Psychosis. Many wrestlers who were in this match have reiterated that this match did happen inside of a 16-sided cage and Dave Meltzer allegedly was there and said that the Triple A Star of Death match was insane with loads of great spots. But unfortunately, this piece of media is lost because apparently there was a problem with the footage and so Triple A ended up keeping it. The match is probably locked away somewhere in the vaults of Triple A. And now moving on to the deepest layer of the iceberg, Tier 6. With our first entry on Tier 6 being The Undertaker vs New Jack. The Undertaker has gained fame and recognition as one of the most iconic and enduring figures in the history of professional wrestling. He made his debut for the WWE in 1990 and went on to have a long and successful career. On the other hand, New Jack is a wrestler who is most notably known for his time in ECW. He gained notoriety for his hardcore and extreme wrestling style, often incorporating the use of weapons and engaging in violent, chaotic matches. 
But before New Jack was in ECW, he used to wrestle for Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Jim Cornette was working at WWE at the time while still owning Smoky Mountain Wrestling. And because of that, Smoky Mountain Wrestling and WWE had a working relationship in which some WWE talent used to go to Smoky Mountain Wrestling to work. And one of these wrestlers was The Undertaker, who showed up in Smoky Mountain Wrestling in 1995. The Undertaker was then put in a program with New Jack, and there's a promo where New Jack is in a graveyard calling out The Undertaker. In Smoky Mountain Wrestling, The Undertaker teamed up with Tracy Smothers in a handicap match against the gangsters, consisting of New Jack, Mustafa, and D'Lo Brown. So there is a time in wrestling history where The Undertaker and New Jack wrestled each other, which is wild to think about. WWE actually owns all of the Smoky Mountain Wrestling tapes, so they have the match between The Undertaker and New Jack somewhere within their vault, but it's unlikely that it will ever be released. And up next we have the disturbed cover of Triple H's theme song, The Game. Triple H's theme song, The Game, is a song that was made for him and was written and performed by the English rock band Motorhead. Several alternate versions exist, including a completely unreleased cover by the American heavy metal band, Disturbed. In an interview from 2006, Disturbed's lead vocalist David Dryman confirmed the existence of the song. After this interview, however, official channels did not speak of the existence of the track, and nor has it been released to the public. In 2019, a Twitter user posted a small part of the song. How they got this is currently unknown. And next up we have the body count match in ECW. The tag team's bad company featuring Tanaka and Paul Diamond and the public enemy featuring Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge were locked into a feud against each other and agreed to a match on the 7th December 1993 edition of Hardcore TV. The teams agreed upon a body count match. The stipulation would be that Pat Tanaka and Rocco Rock would wrestle in the ring while their respected partners Diamond and Grunge would be locked in separate jail cells and whoever won the match would be able to free their tag partner and the loser would witness their partner's jail cell explode. And if there was no winner after 15 minutes, then both jail cells would explode. In the match, Tanaka picked up the victory via pinfall. This means that he should have been able to rescue his tag team partner Diamond from the explosion. But a malfunction happened and it was actually Diamond's cell that exploded. Ultimately, the explosion was deemed underwhelming though. According to Diamond, ECW's Paul Heyman was not given permission to utilize fireworks that would have created a bigger bang. Rather, paper was lit to create the smoke and a recording of an explosion was used for the sound. The poor quality finish led to outrage from the ECW crowd, leading to boos and chants of money back. Despite the poor explosion, Diamond was still forced to sell the effects of it and he claimed that it was the most embarrassing situation he had ever been in. Hmm. This situation seems a lot like another situation that happened in wrestling in 2021, but I can't quite put my finger on it. Because of the university negative reception among the fans in attendance and ECW personnel, the match and the aftermath never aired on ECW television, despite being planned to air, and was never mentioned again. Footage still exists, but it's most likely located somewhere within WWE's vaults, as WWE purchased ECW's assets and tape library in 2003. And next up we have the lost footage of Loki losing his mind at a CZW event. In the year 2000, during a Combat Zone wrestling event in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Loki and Mercury faced off against Rick Blade and TCK in a tag team match. During his hardcore match, Blade was standing on top of a basketball hoop with Mercury lying prone on a table. Blade incorrectly performed a leg drop from the hoop, resulting in him crashing through the table but also hitting the back of his head onto the floor, instantly knocking him out. As CZW personnel tended to Blade, Loki started becoming irate. It allegedly had less to do with Blade's health, but more so for consequently being unable to perform all the spots that he had planned. He started to flip out in front of the audience, with him assuming that he was being screwed by CZW as he was associated with a rival promotion. Nobody was able to calm Loki down. Eventually a member of security grabbed Loki and carried the furious wrestler out of the ring and off backstage. Following these incidents, the match was declared a victory for Blade and TCK. The match itself is included in the official DVD release of the event, however for unknown reasons the Loki tantrum was edited out of the video. The full tape remains within CZW. And next up we have the Big Show's moonsault. Paul White, also known as the Giant or the Big Show, is a professional wrestler who competed primarily within WCW and WWE. He's famous for his large stature, coined as the world's largest athlete by WWE, with him also winning 7 world championships throughout his career. During his early years in professional wrestling, he was able to perform athletic wrestling moves like missile dropkicks from the top rope and kip-ups, and additionally there is footage out there of the big show performing a moonsault. 
When the Big Show was on Talk is Jericho, he discussed how he performed the moonsault during a house show tour of Japan. This resulted in him receiving harsh responses from wrestlers, including Hulk Hogan, who strongly discouraged him from using such moves. The Giant would ultimately utilize a moveset more appropriate for his size following feedback from other wrestlers, and he nixed the moonsault from his arsenal. Many people are said to have seen footage of the Big Show doing a moonsault in his early days, and the Big Show himself confirmed in 2022 that there is a VHS recording that was made that featured him doing the moonsault, but it remains to be seen if it will ever get revealed. And the last entry on the last tier, the deepest point of the iceberg, is the Jim Cornette banana tape. This entry is not safe for work, and it's at the bottom of the iceberg for a reason. Just putting it out there so you don't get too shocked by what you're about to hear. Jim Cornette is a prominent figure in the world of professional wrestling, known for his contributions as a manager, commentator, and promoter. He has had a long and varied career in the wrestling industry, and is often regarded as one of the most outspoken and controversial personalities in the business. In 1995, he was working for WWE, and he had some problems in his personal life with his wife, as she wanted a divorce. The problems with his wife eventually went to court, and part of the evidence that Cornette's wife had was a video of a dominatrix shoving a banana into the orifice on the backside of Jim Cornette. Yes, you heard that right. It's alleged that when Vince McMahon found out about this, he found it hilarious and made sure to rib him relentlessly for it. At this time, Jim Cornette was working in the creative team in WWE, and because Vince McMahon found it so hilarious, he allegedly ribbed Cornette by having a bunch of bananas around for every creative meeting for a while after he found out. Even Kevin Nash referenced this during an interview, when he said that the only match that Jim Cornette would do with him is a banana on a pole match. Even other wrestlers like Chris Jericho and Sean Waltman have also referenced the banana tape during interviews. Perhaps the most famous reference to the banana tape was during an episode of Raw in 1997 when Triple H and Shawn Michaels were doing commentary at ringside and they were eating bananas live on air, allegedly as a rib to Jim Cornette backstage who was working in creative. The Jim Cornette banana tape is the holy grail of lost wrestling media and his wife is probably the only person who has the tape. So it's probably never going to come out but if it were to come out it would be absolutely insane but also quite disturbing. Anyway. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other videos. This video took a lot of effort to make, so please like, share, comment, subscribe. Goodbye.